Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Who wants to see a 4.6 valve intake shootout? We have three different Ford intake manifolds. We have the 4.6 valve truck manifold, the 4.6 valve PI manifold, and the Ford Racing bullet intake manifold. And here's the cool thing. All of these PI intake manifolds were tested on a non-PI motor. So how do we do that? And also, what's the super cool technology offered by the truck manifold? In this video, we're gonna compare three different Ford intake manifolds. We have the 4.6.2 valve truck, the 4.6.2 valve PI, and the Ford Racing bullet intake manifold. So here's the question. What is the super cool technology offered by the truck intake? And that is a divided plenum. That's right, it has a divider in the plenum that allows it to run lots of plenum volume or only half the plenum volume. The question is, what effect does it have on power? Also, what about that bullet intake manifold from Ford Racing? It has the giant size throttle body. It's aluminum. It's an aftermarket intake. Is it any better than the factory stuff? Let's find out. Hey guys, before we get to the results, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to talk about part two of this intake test where we run a bunch of other intakes on the two valve combinations. We've got the Reichart Racing intake manifold, the P51 intake manifold, the Trick Flow intake, and of course, the Super Richie fabricated intake. Stick around to the end. This test was run to compare three different Ford manifolds, two factory manifolds, and one performance manifold from Ford Racing. The first was the factory 462 valve truck intake manifold, which has some interesting things going on with that, against the factory PI intake manifold, the one that we see on the Mustang. And then the final one was the aluminum bullet intake manifold from the guys over at Ford Racing. So this test, oddly enough, was not run on a PI two valve motor. It was run on a non-PI motor. And how did we do that? Well, this particular motor was built, we were going to be running boost on it, but we, back in the day, we ran a set of, of CNC ported non-PI cylinder heads, but they had been modified actually through welding to change the port size to a PI size port and to accept the PI intake manifold. And the reason that people did this is because Obviously, a non-PI intake manifold is not very good, and there weren't a lot of non-PI intake manifolds available for those earlier motors. So, what the guys from Ford Performance Solutions did, they took a non-PI head, welded it, and ported it so that it would accept all of the available PI intake manifolds, and that's what we used to run this test on. That particular motor was also, get a little camera shake because I hit my thing here, um, this particular motor was also equipped with a set of small comp cams. They were the Extreme Energy 262AH two-valve cam, so they were actually PI two-valve cams. Um, obviously, the heads had valve springs in them to accept that particular camshaft. We ran it with hooker long tube headers, a fast XFI management system, and then we started out with the truck intake manifold and obviously put a suitable throttle body on that. The one that's different is the same the, the same throttle body was run on, on the first two intake manifolds, and then we had an oval throttle body to match the oval throttle body opening on the aluminum bullet intake manifold. So run in this configuration first with the truck manifold. Now the truck manifold was different from the PI intake manifold in that it had much longer runners it was taller, obviously you had more uh, hood room in the truck, but it was taller to try to enhance torque production. They also had one other trick in here, which I'm going to show you, but run with the truck manifold. Our two valve combination produced 336 horsepower and 356 foot pounds of torque. And this kind of tells you that this was a mild combination. Despite the fact that we had those 262 cams in it, we were a little surprised that this thing made more torque than horsepower, but that's kind of what the truck manifold was designed to do. But here's a cool thing with the truck manifold. They actually, Ford actually put a divider down in the plenum. And what they would do is the divider would open and close uh, based on a signal from the computer. And what it would do is increase plenum volume basically. So it changed the resonance frequency of the plenum by having it divided or undivided. And here's what happened when you activate that, that divider. As you can see, from about 4,000 RPM on out, it, made, it basically made no change to power. But if you look at below that RPM range, what they're trying to do is enhance torque. So in its divided form, um, you see the red line and see down here below 2,900 RPM, it offered more torque down low down there. But if we kept it in its divided form, it would start to lose torque from 3,000 to 4,000 RPM. So what they did was then 
what they're doing is um, dividing it and undividing it during this RPM range so that you can basically get the boat the best of both worlds. So it's kind of a cool deal that they did on the truck manifold. So now let's take a look and see how this truck manifold compares to the standard PI manifold for the Mustang that we all know and love. So here we have our long runner truck intake manifold for the 462 valve. Now we're going to compare that to the PI intake, the one that we use on the Mustang. Much shorter, kind of performance oriented. Here's what happened when we ran the PI intake manifold. And not surprisingly, um, we have a slight loss in low speed power below 3900 RPM. So the truck manifold, which we would expect because you're they're more in interested in, in torque production basically down that lower RPM range. The, the long runner truck manifold is actually a little bit better down low, but from 4,000 out to six out past 6,000 RPM, the PI manifold obviously did a lot better. So we had 336 horsepower and 356 foot pounds with the truck manifold, but by comparison, the PI manifold offered. 365 horsepower and 372 foot pounds of torque. So you can see it depends on where you want your power production. The PI manifold, if you're, you know, if you're racing and you're going from 4,000 to 6,500 or so, if that's your RPM split, that's going to offer a lot better power. It's going to offer a lot better acceleration. But if you're a truck guy and you're more interested in up to 4,000 or even 4,500 RPM, the because you if you were going to run the truck manifold you probably would run it with a milder camshaft than this so the crossover might be in a slightly different point and obviously if we add into the fact that here is our divided option also so we'll have even more of a torque gain down low below 3000 with the divided truck manifold so again that's why that they utilize that particular technology in that combination but as we thought, more power from the PI manifold. So now let's take a look at our final intake manifold. And that's actually the aluminum um, bullet intake manifold that was offered by the guys from Ford Racing. So this was more of a performance oriented manifold. You can see it had a different inlet on it. It had a larger throttle opening. So ultimately, if we were to run this on a combination that needed that kind of airflow and more airflow than a uh, 65 or 70 or 75 millimeter throttle body would offer that we would run on the typical um, elbow and, and throttle body inlet on the PI, uh, the PI intake manifold. Let's see what happened though when we ran this bullet intake manifold on this combination with the ported head and comp cam. You can see, interestingly enough, it made almost the same power as the PI manifold through most of the curve. Now it shows a little bit more power at the top past 5,000 RPM, and that's kind of what we would expect. The, the bullet manifold seemed to have a little bit shorter runner length than the bullet or than the PI manifold. But what I think is happening here is we just didn't have a combination that would actually take advantage of what that intake manifold had to offer. We needed something that was making over 400 horsepower, which is certainly possible with other NA stuff. When we've run other PI combinations with a bigger cam, like the 274 cam, and then ported PI heads and not these ported and modified non-PI heads, we're much closer to 400 horsepower. And then if you use the bullet intake manifold, you're going to see more gains. But if we take a look at the other combinations, you'll see that um, the short runner intake manifolds do on this two valve, the same thing that they do on every other motor. They gain power at the top and then they lose power at the bottom. The factory guys are pretty good at producing an intake manifold designed for their application that offers a fairly broad like power and torque curve, but there's always more to be had up top. Just as a little bonus test, we actually built this motor with four draws and four pistons so we could run boost and other kinds of power adders on it. One of the first things that we did while I was doing this intake manifold test is we ran nitrous on it. So I want to show you what happened. We put a uh, Zex wet fogger kit on it. And this was our combination with the bullet intake manifold on it. Here's what happened when we hit it with our first, it was a 125 shot. So our power output jumped from 367 horsepower up to 462 horsepower. So we didn't quite get a hundred shot on our, our 125 on this. We got about a hundred and peak torque was up at 501 foot pounds of torque. We did actually, this thing was a little bit on the rich side. So what I did was we did a little bit of tuning on it and took some fuel away. This thing was super safe, but 
So after richening it up, you can see it does have an effect on the power. Um, power was up to 471 horsepower. So we were gaining power. And even here, it was still uh, at like 10.8 or 10.9. So we didn't do a bunch more tuning on this. You could certainly get more power. And we had the right jetting in it, I'm sure, to add 125 horsepower. And we've done that a bunch. But it just goes to show you, this is what, adding nitrous, this is why guys do it. Because it's so simple and it makes <laughs> and it makes so much power. We engage this thing a little bit below 4,000 RPM and ran it out past 6,000 RPM. So not only do you get the peak gains, but you get big average average gains, which is why we made a little over 500 foot-pounds of torque when we engage it at its earliest point. So nitrous always works. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this testing on our 4.6 liter 2L? First of all, we learned this. Intake manifolds can change the power output on a two valve fork, just like they do in everything else. That's why it's important to do this kind of testing so you guys can find out what intake manifolds actually work. And in this testing, I thought the awesome thing was the 4.6 two valve truck manifold that divided plenum was awesome because it added power specifically down low and i like the fact that it did that without changing power in the rest of the rpm range because let's face it they designed that intake manifold and it's divided plenum to work on that stock truck manifold not our weird combination that consisted of a pi intake manifold and a non-pi head and ported with cams and all that stuff so i thought that that was cool i also thought the pi manifold as always works well, but I expected a little bit more power out of the Ford Racing bullet intake, but in its defense, we really didn't have enough motor to make that manifold show what it could do. And that brings me to my last complaint about this test, and that's actually the combination itself. I should have run all of this testing on a combination that had a ported PI head and not this like converted non-PI head so that it would work with a PI combination. This motor was low compression. It had a weird cylinder head on it. It had a good camshaft on it, but I think that there are better combinations that I could have run this test on, but it just goes to show you. It showed us, hey, the PI intake manifold works well. It's middle of the road. We know that the Ford Racing Manifold will probably make more power. We also know that the Truck Manifold has the cool double plenum gizmo. Coming up in the next video, in part two of this, I have even more 4.6.2 valve testing. I'm, and I promise to run it on actual two valve PI heads, both ported and non-ported, but I ran a bunch of different intake manifolds. Obviously, we ran the PI intake manifold as the baseline, and we compared that to the Trick Flow intake manifold, the Riker Racing intake manifold, the P51 intake manifold, and of course, the Super Richie Dual Plenum custom fabricated intake manifold. So how did they all do? You guys will have to wait until the next video. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and make sure to watch the next video.